Before Beatles were famous, Stuart Sutcliffe met the photographer Astrid Kirsha. She took their photograph, and the rest is history. It was cold because we all had heavy coats on. I think the picture's been reprinted here and there once or twice, but that, that was the last time it came We were probably the f first rock and roll group in Liverpool, I think, at that time. So we wrote to Butlins. They auditioned us, thought we were good enough, and offered us a job in Butlins Holiday Camp in Patheli. The other rock and roll group they took on at that particular time was Cliff Richard and the Drifters, and they were taking on for Minehead. Now, that was a big thing in 1960, to get a contract to play in a holiday camp, because the money was good. Probably about £25 a week, £30, which back in 1960 was a lot of money, you know. So Charlie, our other guitarist, and Wally decided they would pack their work in and we'd go full time as a rock and roll band. I think Ringo was a bit hesitant because he was serving an apprenticeship and it meant that if he did pack up, he was in the middle of his apprenticeship, you know, his job would be gone. So anyway, we, we persuaded him that it's a good opportunity for him. I think Rory said, you know, we'll get the we'll club together, we'll buy the kit, because I think he didn't have a full kit of drums at that particular time. We got a kit of drums together and went to Pizzelli. And from then on, we never looked back. We would build his top build, build band from Liverpool, Rory Storm and his Hurricanes. When we'd been there a week, we closed the under down and moved the Beatles in with us. So they did the post, great big posters, Rory Storm and his, and his Hurricanes, and the support band with the Beatles. So the two bands alternated at the Kaiser Cabin. So that meant that we'd start seven o'clock in the evening and probably finish about four in the morning. An hour and a half on, an hour and a half off, an hour and a half on, an hour and a half on. Though it was hard work, you know, we really um, became tight bands. And the same happened to the Beatles, but the Beatles had the edge on us because they used to do a little bit of their own material. Whereas we didn't, we were, we just did what we, we, we thought we liked, we'd copy a record that we liked particularly, but they did some of their own material. Bear in mind, that was when Ringo was still playing with us and Pete Best was still their drummer. Stuart Sutcliffe was still the bass player, but Stuart kept himself to himself. He was... He didn't mix so much with us. At the end of the set night, we would go out and eat, but Stuart, he didn't mix. He'd go and see his girlfriend, Mastered. Rory was a bit put out because Ringo had been with us a long time. John and Paul came to the camp, asked him to join, and we never stood in his way. They had the recording contact at that time, which nobody in Liverpool had the recording contact. We had more work probably than any of the bands, even they might be recording, but they still probably never had as much work as what we had. You know? But when you started to see a lot of the bands come on, Brian Epstein signed a lot of them. We never got signed by him. I don't know the particular reason why not, because Rory was the most talented, I'd say, performer. He could walk on water. He was athletic. He looked the part. He had the looks. He could put the songs over. Even the Beatles used to stand at the side of the stage and watch, because you never knew what he was. It was unpredictable. You just didn't know what he was going to do. The crowd loved him. At New Brighton Bats, where we used to do open air concerts, in, where there was a swimming pool, he would go to the third top board, diving board, which was high, strip off his clothes, have a pair of gold lame shorts underneath, couldn't be seen in ordinary trunks. 
do a triple somersault perfectly into the swimming pool. Microphone at the bottom of the diving board. Come out and finish a whole lot of shaking. You couldn't follow that. Disco came in. And really, that was the death knell, I would think, then, of the Mersey Beast or the rock and roll era. I had two kids. I'm seeing an advert for the ambulance service, so I'll put in for that. I didn't have the time to be, as we were before, close friends. At the moment, I still, instead of Rory Storm and the Hurricanes, it's Johnny Guitar and the Hurricanes. We still play exactly the same music. I still use this old guitar, which is 1957. We don't use any special effects. I still do a lot of the material you already used to do. People like it. It's just authentic rock and roll, which is what we do. That's exactly what we were trying to do, hang around the cavern and get famous. We thought we were the stars, you know, 13, ahead of all of these guys. Like. But I guess uh, maybe to others they were looking at us and thought, you know, we were just kids in the front, but to us... It's...